from the testimony of Michael Cohen's lawyer, Mr. Costello. These days, you see individuals running for prospective office who claim, if you elect me, I will bring down this public figure or that public figure who disagrees with my political philosophy. Understand that to destroy a political rival, you need not convict that person of a crime. All you must do is leak the fact that the individual is being investigated for a particular crime, thereby destroying his or her reputation and causing that individual to incur legal fees to defend themselves. The net result is if you can destroy their reputation and bankrupt them with legal fees, you have effectively eliminated or canceled your opposition without ever convicting them of a crime or getting a civil judgment against them. Mr. Costello, I just wanted to say I felt very seen by your testimony that was provided to the committee. Thank but I, I want to get back to what Mr. Lynch said previously, that sometimes when you're accused of something, it's actually the people accusing you who are doing that thing. Now, you were accused of illegally dangling a pardon before Michael Cohen, right? Correct. And that was a lie. Absolutely. That accusation could not withstand any scrutiny or review from the Southern District of New York, where... Uh, Mr. Goldman worked, where other great attorneys have worked, right? And where I worked. Right, but, but that dangling, Correct. that accusation of dangling something improper. Remember what Mr. Lynch said. If you're being accused of that, maybe it's the people doing the accusing. Now, Mr. Trustee, you described a searing fact pattern moments ago. You accused a Department of Justice official of an extortionist ploy to dangle a judgeship before a lawyer to get that lawyer to betray their client, Walt Nada, right? Yes, I have no reason to disbelieve that lawyer. And, and who was the Department of Justice official that engaged in that extortionist ploy? Well, the lead person in that conversation was Jay Bratt, who's still currently assigned to the Southern District of Florida case. What is that? I mean, for those of you who've been prosecutors, who've dedicated your lives to the rule of law, what does it tell us about the shape of the legal system that you have people with the ability to do what Mr. Costello laid out in testimony, to charge you with a crime, destroy your reputation, bankrupt you, like they're trying to do to Walt Nada, a patriot who served in our military, and then to, see, and then to, to hear this claim that they were literally <laughs> trying to compromise the lawyer. How should we reflect on a legal system that permits that? It's broken. I, I had a friend of mine from the Department of Justice text me not too long ago, and he said... It's going to take decades for the department to fix itself. And I love that place. I worked there. I was a prosecutor for 27 years. But I am fearful that we've crossed the Rubicon by being ends justified the means, by engaging in selective targeting and differential treatment. And I don't know how it ends or how it gets better, but I'm happy to at least bring evidence about that issue. Well, and that's why these hearings are so necessary. I think that we would love to stay well constrained within our Article I lane, but when, when we've got this Article II process that is unloading on political rivals and Article III courts, as Mr. Costello said, the only way to have a check and a balance on that system is for the Congress to step forward and to utilize its tools, the most profound being the power of the purse, but indeed we have powers of impeachment and oversight that are important as well. Mr. Costello, is Michael Cohen a liar? That doesn't begin to describe him. Um, he lies at every opportunity when it's in his favor. And, I mean, I could, go, if you had a half an hour or 45 minutes, I could start to list the many lies that he told us. Well, let's just, let's just triage them. Is there a single branch of government that Michael Cohen hasn't lied to? Gee, I, I think there, there isn't. Right. I mean, I, I mean it, it, you really have to work hard to hit the hat trick. I mean, it's one thing to lie to investigators. And it's, I guess it's another thing to lie to Congress, but to lie to investigators and then Congress and then courts. Don't forget the judges. Yeah, the Plainly judges. And he lied to the judge, too, when he pled guilty. And, and it's just so odd. I mean, it's not every day you see someone's former lawyer having to come forward and say, I regrettably have to inform the Congress, the court, whomever, that my own client, I am aware, is a liar. Thank goodness he was foolish enough to execute the waiver of the attorney-client privilege because he was trying to implicate Rudy Giuliani and myself in a crime, so which was absurd. So you lied about that? 
He even lied about trying to turn on you, and I guess his lies are defied by his other lies and the writings and the paperwork, and this liar should not be able to hold our elections hostage, and that is why this hearing is so critical. I yield back. 